Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 28th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First of all, I would like to dedicate today's podcast to Donald Smith. Don was one of the very first, actually, Sands and Storm Center handlers. He has worked with us back on the precursor site, incidents.org, and has been a real great champion of collaboration and free data exchange within the community. For example, he did also work on the traffic light protocol that you may know as one of the standards, how you label data that you're exchanging with peers. He has worked in information security probably for something close to 30 years for Quest, then later for CenturyLink, and most recently for NetScout. And it was via his NetScout colleague, Roland Dobbins, that last week I learned that Don sadly had passed away. So I would like to take this opportunity to just remind everybody of the great contribution that Don has provided to make the internet really a better place and would like to send my thoughts to his family. But of course, the rest of us still has to continue what Don started to work on and try to make this internet a better place. Well, and with that, we do have a post by Didier about analyzing Metasploit ASP.NET payloads. Usually you would use MSF Venom to create these kind of payloads. So you are essentially giving MSF Venom a reverse TCP, for example, shell in his example, and then tell it what port to listen on, what IP address to connect to, and this will spit out code that can then be used as part of an attack. And of course, it's not just penetration testers who use Metasploit, also plenty of real attacks are using this tool. So it's quite helpful to be able to reverse these payloads once you find them on a system or on the network and be able to understand what the attacker was trying to accomplish. And as usual, the DA will walk you through the process of disassembling and decoding this payload step by step. And websites hosting Emotet malware are apparently currently being cleaned up by a vigilante. Now, they're not actually doing much uh, to the website itself. Instead, they're just replacing the payload that Emotet downloads from the website with a GIF image. Not a lot of details about how this is happening or who is doing it. However, it has been well known for a few months now that uh, Emotet uses a rather insecure way to sort of access these websites. Essentially, they're deploying a web shell off uh, GitHub with a fixed and well-known password. So it would be pretty easy for anybody to go in and replace the file that Emotet downloads uh, with an image like this. And the United States Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has released a special bulletin warning about attacks against QNAP NAS devices. Not really sure what prompted this uh, because we are seeing campaigns against these devices pretty much all the time, ranging from, in some cases, ransomware to simple information stealers or malware that will essentially just use the storage capacity of these devices. But probably a good reminder to double check your network storage devices. QNAP is usually not the only one affected from these types of vulnerabilities. And I will say it again, don't expose them to the internet. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.